Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In today's video, I'm going to talk about how to implement a global exception handler for ASP.NET Core web application. By global exception handler, I mean some sort of catch-all handler which will catch all the exceptions even if you have not caught it inside of your application. Now to do that first, I'm going to create a ASP.NET Core web application and I'm going to name it as global exception handler dot demo and I'm going to use a plain API now once the project is created let us just update this out of box controller and here where we're doing get I'm just going to delete this existing code and just let's say throw new argument exception and let's say error error due to argument validation and let us run this application and see what happens let's continue now if you see that we are getting this argument exception and it is the row exception as is which is showing up here and this is of course happening because if we go to the startup.cs we have if it is development use development exception page but if we run in a non-development mode and I'll show you exactly how it will look like if I just comment this code out it will be as if we are running in non-development mode and if we run the application again We can see here it's just throwing a 500 internal server error, which is a very bad user experience. And now if I look into the developer tool, go to the network, let me rerun this. And now we can see that it's coming up with a 500 and the response there is nothing, absolutely nothing. It's just a 500 internal server error. There's no such information on what exactly happened. Now, obviously it is necessary because we are running in production mode. We don't want to expose the internal errors. Now, if we want to handle this kind of error, what we have to do? Now, thankfully, just like use developer exception, there is a middleware for handling exception. So we can say app dot use exception handler. Now exception handler by default doesn't take any parameter, not as much useful. And I'm going to talk about a couple of variation. Variation number one, I'm going to talk about the exception handler path and how we can do it. Variation number two is exception handling option. The variation three is nothing but, and as you can see, it gives the same IE application builder. So with that, if we want to build our own middleware, we can do this, but I'm not going to cover that because out of box middleware itself is good enough for for handling most of the scenarios so let's cover that so but before I do that let me show you when we had the exception running in the previous example the exception is logged by default by the ASP.NET Core framework and it is using of course the iLogger internally which is the logging ex extension provided by ASP.NET Core it's very important to note that because when we build our custom exception handler we want to ensure that those are also getting logged properly so now if we use the use exception handler we can say slash error and at this point all we are asking is let me get rid of this code it's not needed all we are saying essentially that when the exception happens send it to this endpoint and this should take care of handling the error to do that what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a controller here and I'm going to create an empty API controller and I'm going to name it as error controller now I'll get rid of the route here and here I'm going to have public I uh, action result error and here I'm going to have a route and this route is going to have error and pot and then here what I can do is I can return problem and problem is again it's a method available at the controller base class so I can use that now this one I can pass the default or I can send some details and status code and things like that into it so for the timing let's just send out of box let me get rid of this namespaces now if I run this now I'm not going to see this you know ugly error page it will return a proper JSON response 
So it's going to fail at the same place if I continue. Now I can see that it is sending an error message. It's saying right now it is sending a very generic message. An error occurred while processing your request and then 500 but we can definitely change it. Before that let me also show here that this exception is still getting locked. Now if we want to send some better message in the error controller we can get the exception handler. We can say http context dot features dot get here we can say i exception exception handler feature so once we get that we'll get a handle of the exception object so var. now here for the problem method you can see we have details so in the details we can say details is exception dot error dot message that's the message we want to show let's say for example and let's say we want to show the status code and for status code let's figure out what the status code is so let's say var status code is equal to exception dot error dot get type switch and this one let's say if it is type of argument exception dot name then we want to return http status code dot bad request and then let's say for everything else oh, this has to be a constant so we have to provide a constant and for everything else we're going to say http status code dot service unable and here I have to say name okay so now once we have that the next thing is for status code we can say int of the status code so let's try this out so now we are providing a detail which is the exception message and the status code and let's run this application throw the same error now if we run we can see error due to argument validation this is the exact message if you remember we sent as a part of our controller here the error and for the status code you can see it is 400 which is a bad request so this way based on what kind of exception the application is throwing we can decide what kind of validation as well as message if we want to do a switch case on the message also we could do that so this will give us a lot of granularity in terms of how we want to handle it and at the same time you know the logging is something which you get out of box and if you want to do an extra set of logging we, you can always inject a uh, iLogger and do that. Now this is the fast way of handling the use exception handler middleware for handling any uncaught exception in your application and this is a graceful way of handling exception and it will ensure that your application is never broken. So even if you forget to write a try catch block anywhere this will act as a catch all situation. So this is the fast way of doing it and this is more easy and elegant because you're just providing an endpoint point which is supposed to handle and in the end point you define exactly what you want to do and as you can see the problem object as such has a lot of parameter and it allows you to control what you what all you want to show so you have the details which we used instance something which we have not used but we use the status code and then you can have a title and for our case as you can see the title by default it picked up bad request based on the HTTP status code and then apart from title you also have a type so now that we are done with this let's Let's go back to startup and let's use the other overload for the use exception handler. So the next overload is it takes an object of exception handler option. So let's create a new exception handler option. And the exception handler option comes with a couple of properties. An exception handler path. Exception handler path is nothing but it does the exact same thing that the other overload we used for use exception handler endpoint. It just takes a handler path and once you give the path it will be handled by that particular path. So I'm just going to run it, click on the continue and then we can see it is handled exactly the same way because it's the same handler which is getting called. Now just to make sure that this is exactly what it is doing I'm just going to put a breakpoint, click on the F5, continue and you can see 
it is handled by this particular handler. So this is one variation of the exception handler option and this is not something which interests us because we can just use it without creating an exception handler. What is interesting is this exception handler property. Now exception handler property takes a request delegate. Now this request delegate gives us the context which is the HTTP context and then with this HTTP context we can do what we want. Now this HTTP context, the reason you are getting an it is showing a red squiggly because it's an away table. So let's first return a task dot completed task so that you know we do not get the exception anymore. Now here also we can do the exact same thing to find out what is the exception and we can use similar logic. So let's do that instead of HTTP context is going to be C and let me add the diagnostics and the system.net namespaces. Okay, so now at this point we know what it is and we can say, you know, this is the feature and things like that. Okay, so now next thing what we can do is we can set up the response ourselves. So we can say context.response and let's set the status code is equal to int of the status code that we got. And after that, we want to do the HTTP context dot response dot body dot write. And when we do write, the write takes a byte array. So to get the byte array, let's first create it. So let's say content is equal to encoding dot UTF-8 dot get bytes. And let's say we want to say there is an error or instead of writing there is an error we can directly take the exception object that we got so we can say error and here we can say exception dot error dot message so we are just taking the message and we're getting the byte array out of it. And then here for the right async, we can give the content. The offset is going to be zero. This is where we're going to start. And the length or the content count is going to be content dot length. And this is going to write into the body of the response. So now if we run the application, what is going to happen is we're going to go through this cycle and just to demonstrate, I'm going to put a breakpoint here and let me run. And now I'm just going to click on continue. And then you can see we came to this and as usual and as expected, we got the exception and the error is the argument exception. And then based on the type of the error, we are going to execute the rest of the code. So I'm just going to press F5. And here you can see error, error due to argument validation. Now it is writing exactly what we said. And if we just bring on the developer tool, if we refresh, now we can see that the status is 400 as expected because this is the status we are setting and in the response is the response that we are passing. So this way we can also handle how we want to handle the global exception. I personally prefer doing through error controller and by the way, even in that condition, you can see the logger is logging what is exactly the reason for exception. So our error log is not lost. We are still getting the underlying error. As long as we have iLogger configured, we should be fine. Now, as I was saying, I personally prefer using the controller way of handling the global exception because that way we have a cleaner separation of actual exception handling compared to doing everything here in the startup. Though technically we can get this entire code into a different class and have the exception handler map to it. But again, we have to deal with writing the body and content ourselves. Yeah, if we have a very specific need of doing something very custom probably makes sense doing it this way for example if you want to send a json response every time then yeah probably doing it this way would make a lot of sense whereas if you are dealing with normal scenarios and you just have to send exception the out of box way this just works so that's all i wanted to cover today if you like this video please give me a thumbs up and if you are not subscribed to my channel and you have been getting value out of my channel please subscribe to it Thanks so much for watching this video.